Hey guys, it's Josephine from The Point Shop, and we're talking about advanced customization for your point shoes. We're having so much fun. I'm here with Shelby Williams, better known as Biscuit Ballerina. If you don't already follow her, please go follow her because her feed is hilarious. Her personal page is also Shelby's Biscuit Life. So if you want to see more serious ballet, that's where you should go because Shelby's a beautiful dancer and we're going to be talking about how to customize your shoe if you're a professional dancer or if you're on track to become a professional dancer. This is not for your first pair of point shoes. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so let's talk about all of your point shoes. We have several of your shoes here, and then the customize that you, the customizations that you have for your shoes. So tell us about the type of point shoe that you wear and what you do to them. Okay, so I wear Freed of London. Um, I've worn many different types of shoes as I was going from being a student to being a professional, but in the end, I found that these worked best for me. Freeds do tend to break down a little bit faster than other shoes, but for me as a professional, that's really necessary because I need to go from doing rehearsal in the studio to stage with shoes that can be ready in a day or two. Um, and my company's constantly providing me with shoes, so the cost of replacing shoes is not a burden on me in any way. Right, because how quickly do you go through the shoes? Um, on kind of slow periods where I'm not doing a lot of point work, I go through about one pair a week, but on times where we're doing a lot of intense point work all day, the whole time. Uh, I probably go through about three pairs a week, maybe four. So you heard that ballerinas, you can go through point shoes two to three times a week. So if you do these customizations, it's gonna go a little bit faster. Shelby gets free point shoes from her company. You probably don't, so keep that in <laughs> mind when we're talking about these customizations. Budgeting is important. That's true. Yeah. That's like half of your ballet like budget goes to point shoes, basically. So exactly. <laughs> so I do I do different things with my shoes depending on what I'm going to be dancing, mm -hmm. and I don't think there's one way to prepare a shoe for everything. Um, different roles require different things. So, you know, a time when I'm dancing a lot on point and doing maybe partnering work, I don't want a soft shoe. I want something that's harder that's gonna support me when I'm spending so much time up on point. Um, but when I'm doing things like something really heavy in Petit Allegro, like Bourninville or any kind of other little jumpy, quick um, piece, I like to have my shoes very soft, almost to the point that I probably shouldn't be wearing them. <laughs> So I do different things. I, this is a pair that I haven't done anything to yet. Um, so pretty when they're yeah, new. Yeah, they're so shiny. So shiny. That goes away so quickly. Oh, yes. <laughs> One class. <laughs> um, so I usually start, something I do with every pair is I do have them customized already. So um, I went and got measurements done so that I know the length of the vamp, the heel, the side, and then whether I chose to have a V-shape or rounded vamp. And I go with a V-shape because for the line of my foot, it just looks better. Um, and I have them three-quartered already. So if I were to open this up, you already see that part of the shank goes all the way to the end, but the rest of it stops earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I have my shoes prepared. And sometimes if it feels like they're a little bit stiff, I'll cut them down a, a little more so that it really shapes to my arch and where it is. Um, and then the next thing I do is I tend to cut the outside, the back as well, because I don't have really high arches that will bend shoes as easily as some others. So I do, with a X-Acto knife, I cut out a little part of my shank there, and then that gives it on the outside less resistance, and then it shapes the shoe already, and then I can cut it like this and go on stage immediately, where if I didn't, I probably wouldn't be able to mold them with my feet as quickly as I would like to and have them stage ready on that same day. So I just take, I have a knife, you just take a, like a box cutting knife and go ahead and open up the shank and then find where your arch has its highest point mm -hmm. and then find that same point in the shoe and that's where you want to kind of bend the shank and if you need to cut it, then just go ahead and draw a line, cut through it with the knife and tear that off. Mm -hmm. um, but then I also cut on the outside, which is at the same point on the outside shank and I just bend, I usually put it on my foot first, see where it hits naturally in my arch, make a mark, and then I turn it back around and I bend it at where the um, mark was. And then I just cut two angles in towards each other and usually a little piece falls out and I pull that away. And then I have this, this type of a cut. Yeah, so even with the customized shoe from Freed of London, Shelby still has to do more things to her shoe to make it look perfect. Yes, exactly. There's Some people are just 
blessed mm -hmm. and they can wear shoes straight out the box. But I would say most professional dancers have their own little alterations that they do when they get in their shoes. Um, the other way to cut my shoes, which I learned from uh, a dancer in my company, is to cut not a small sliver, but a slightly shallower, wider sliver so that when the shoe bends, um, rather than bending at a sharp angle like it can with these like when seven. I cut it that way, mm -hmm. yeah, rather than looking like a seven, it kind of rounds it out so that when the shoe bends, you have a nice rounded mm -hmm. um, instep. And so same thing, finding where that hits on your arch and then making a little mark of where that peak in the arch is and then widening it out and cutting a mark maybe an inch, not even an inch wide, top and bottom, and you cut at an angle in, and then bending it and kind of, I like to saw because sometimes slicing, it's, it's scary because you, if you're not, never cut close to your legs, always at a distance. But when you cut, if it, you try to slice, it can slice off and then end up hitting the ground. So I like to do it in a sawing motion that I extend out the knife like this, and then I just do a little like saw back and forth. That, like there. And it's also really important to know that if you are using an X-Acto knife or a box cutter, then you should have a parent with you um, if you are making these customizations because, you know, you can slice off a piece of something that you don't want to be sliced off. Yeah. I, I know a couple of dancers who made the mistake of trying to cut it in their lap and then ending up cutting their hand or cutting their leg. So you always, if you're gonna make any cuts in your shoes in the shank, you wanna have it on a flat surface, not a hardwood floor. So don't destroy your parents' house. <laughs> Preferably somewhere, go outside and make the little marks. And then I find the safest way is doing this little sawing motion to slowly cut off parts of it. And this mm -hmm. is like thin little bits of it come out until it's shallow. You don't wanna cut too deep because you don't wanna cut into the stitching. So mm -hmm. the whole um, thing you need to take care of is not cutting all the way through the shank. You're just taking off a layer so it's a little bit more flexible. Yeah, I've never actually seen this before, so it's kind of cool. It gives you a little bit more custom and yeah. like a little bit more um, depth in your yeah. dancing. It's yeah. like rounder and, and prettier. And I, I like that it has a, a wider range of where it bends rather than just feeling an exact place like, oh, it's bending here. Yes. And you have to be quite strong to wear shoes that are this soft. Like you love yeah. these soft shoes. I, like. Some of these shoes, I like, can't believe you can even dance in them. Like, look at this. <laughs> like, she can dance in this. This is amazing. But that's always been my thing as a dancer is I haven't had the greatest feet that are the most flexible, but I've always had strong feet because I did so many strengthening exercises to prepare myself for point and uh, to also try to improve how well I could work through my shoes. So I ended up with very strong ankles, which is why in Biscuit Ballerina, I can do all of these things like pulling back on my feet and jumping around on point or I like things that people are asking, like, how are you not hurting yourselves? And it's because I might not have the greatest feet, but I, I have strong feet <laughs> kind of by normal standards. Right. So that's why I'm able to cut down my shoes so much because it really benefits me aesthetically without being to my detriment because I don't need the support as much as, as other people may need it. That's true. And a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of dancers in training, they'll say, oh, I have really strong feet, so I need really hard shoes. But that's actually the opposite. If you have really strong feet like Shelby, you should be able to wear a really soft shoe and be supported. Yeah. So th that makes a really big difference. And like that kind of perspective needs to kind of change now because, yeah, you know, yeah. depends a lot on shoes. Because the strength of the shoe completely is dependent on uh, so many factors. Like, where is the strength in the shoe? Is it in the shank? Do you have a really strong box? And it's, it's like me, I know I need the box to always be very hard because I'm tough on my shoes. And especially, especially when I, when I do things where I'm like, going for it and I'm almost jumping on point, I don't want the box to be soft at all. Some dancers like to feel the floor more, but I like the shank to be soft and the box to always be very hard. So, and that's different for every dancer too. Like where you need the strength in your shoes, like you kind of have to understand that. And certain shoes and certain brands have either harder boxes or harder shanks depending on what the brand is. So kind of knowing that about yourself yeah. really helps out a lot. Exactly. We were talking a little bit off camera about how you wear different shoes for different things that yeah. you do. So let's talk a little bit more about that. And like, I know you talked about Paul already and then you talked about how you needed a more supportive yeah. shoe, but um, let's talk about, um, what kind of things that you like and what kind of shoes you save for those yeah. specific things? So I actually, 
Although I wear all the same size and measurements in Freed, I have two different makers which I use from Freed. I have uh, Maker Z, which has a little bit of a thinner profile compared to other makers I've had, which I like to use for slower things, more adagio or anything where really you have time to see the footwork properly. Um, because there I want my feet to look their best. Mm -hmm. um, but then I go with Maker L, which is a little bit boxier in its shape and a little bit wider when I'm doing really intense uh, releve things or things where I need to balance, turn on point, and I just want a solid platform. Mm -hmm. And I'm not so preoccupied with, I want my foot to look its absolute best. And so even there, there's a difference just in aesthetics but then, and, and how supported I feel. Um, but there's also, I depending on the season, I wear different shoes. Because in winter, my feet are a little bit smaller because in the cold, they're not swollen like they are in the summer heat. So I, I will go with a slightly narrower shoe in the winter. And then I tend to go with my, my Maker L, my wider shoes in summer when with the heat and also doing more outdoor activities and walking around more, my feet are more swollen. So then I go with the Maker L to, to compensate for that. Otherwise, you know, I'll have the exact same shoe and I'll wear it in February and then I'll pull it back out in June and I cannot wear it just because my feet change depending on the weather, or depending on how much I'm dancing at the time, whether my feet are um, swollen from long rehearsals or whether they're like much smaller than usual because I'm not working them as much. So It's so true because like we get some dancers from different parts of the United States where they have different temperatures and different humidities. So for example, if a dancer from Hawaii comes in here to get fitted for point shoes and their feet are shrunken at that point, they'll take the same shoe back to Hawaii and they won't fit anymore. So that happens a lot of times. Your feet change so much throughout the season and even throughout the week. Yeah. If you have like a heavy rehearsal week, then like by the end of the week, your feet are two sizes bigger or two sizes smaller. Your feet change quite a bit. So that's a really good point that you bring up. And um, that's a really cool solution that you just have different makers yeah. to like compensate for those differences. I always know I'm going to wear my big shoes on Saturday. It's like <laughs> end of the week. It's hopeless. I need the extra it's room like for your, my foot. Your big foot day. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday's my big foot day. It's like, it's like your sweatpant day, you know, when you're like, you just need to be comfortable. My, my big shoes, I wear them on my Saturdays. <laughs> so it's a very big difference. So sometimes you might have a shoe that works out perfectly at the store depending on what the store temperature is like and depending on where you are in the season and how much you've danced that week or that day even it's going to be a huge difference so you want to make sure that you want to keep all of that in mind and compensate for all of that yeah there's also some things I, I do to my shoes when I know they're going to die quickly mm -hmm. and to help them last a bit longer and one of them is darning Yes. Because I, I like darning when I'm doing anything that has to do with pirouettes or balance because it kind of gives it that little frame so that you know where the bottom of your shoe is in case that, you know, point shoes aren't always perfect. So sometimes it's a little bit rounder on the bottom. Sometimes it's a little bit flatter. So this kind of makes them a little bit more consistent. And I have that same flat feeling with all the pairs of shoes as long as I darn them the same way. Um, but it also really helps extend their life. Mm -hmm. Because anytime I'm doing something where I have to push over my foot, it always if I don't darn my shoes, they tend to start dying here first. Before the shank is dead, before the rest of the box is dead, just that tip where I'm pushing over the shoe starts to die. And so by darning them, it really gives it a little wall of thread that, that prevents the paper mache underneath from breaking down. Mm -hmm. And then they, it's amazing how much longer my shoes last when I darn them. And there's different ways that people darn. I know a lot of people who, with their needle, they do a series of knots all the way around. I was taught in school by a teacher to take thread and loop it around my fingers to make a little circle, place it on the top of my point oh. shoe, and then sew it into place by doing loops around that circle of thread. Oh, interesting. And I find that goes a little bit faster. Uh-huh. Um, and then, but then there's also times that I don't darn my shoes because... I want to be doing things where I roll up and down easily and I don't want to feel like I have a little wall of darning stopping me from being as smooth as possible in the rolling up and down. And in that case, I always make sure I jet glue the bottom of my shoe. Mm. If I'm not going to darn it and I want it to last longer, I always um, turn my shoe inside out and I know up until what point I need to glue the box because my box is always what dies first. So I turn it inside out as much as possible and then I just do drip by drip because if I squeeze, it goes everywhere. And I do like 
drip by drip by drip by drip, making a little circle in the box mm -hmm. and making sure that the glue doesn't come up any higher than about halfway because otherwise it gets too close to my metatarsals and it rubs and it's just so uncomfortable so you, to keep the glue low. And then I know a lot of people when they have the ball of the shoe break down too quickly, they do glue on this sort of angle along the sides or even on the arch if you have strong arches and you need some more support here. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who are not familiar with jet glue, this is just something that makes your shoes a little bit harder and makes it a little last, uh, last a little bit longer. But everybody breaks their shoes a little differently. Some people will break the box first like you, some people will break the shank first. So depending on where you break your shoes, that's where you wanna glue your shoes. So you have to kind of figure out where you break your shoes first before you determine where you need this because if you go crazy and just glue all your shoes, it's just gonna turn into a rock and that's not fun. It's painful. It's really painful if you glue it in the wrong place. Right. So check your shoes first and that's see right. what's naturally breaking down rather than assuming, oh, everyone's gluing their shank, I should glue my shank. I've done that before as a student and then I couldn't get over my shoes mm -hmm. and it was, um, pretty upsetting that I had to get rid of those shoes. Yeah, that's a very expensive mistake. <laughs> yeah. So that's how you customize an advanced shoe. Again, this is for advanced dancers. That's my dog. Um, if you're a dancer in training, though, this is not the best way to customize your shoe because it won't last very long. But if you're a dancer in an academy, if you're on your way to becoming a professional dancer, these are certainly ways that will make your shoes prettier on your feet, prettier on your biscuit. Again, this is Shelby Williams from Biscuit Ballerina. We're having so much fun. I get to hang out with Biscuit Ballerina all day today, yeah. And this is how she customizes her shoes. Okay, Yay, kisses. kisses. <laughs> Good job, oh. kisses. <laughs>so happy she doesn't play with point shoes. Oh my gosh, can Is you imagine? Is she chewed on point shoes? Never. <gasps> oh my gosh, she would have, I would have gone out of business <laughs> if she would have che chewed on point shoes. Thank goodness she doesn't do that. But these are actually a favorite chew toy of dogs. Because, point shoes? Yeah, because it's like squishy oh. and it's smelly and like. I got lucky, my family dog never chewed on, oh, I would cry. Oh my I gosh, right? home to find. I cannot Do you have even kids coming you. in with like, their parents being like the dog. Oh yeah, dog chewed my do shoes. dog ate my shoe. Oh, I know, mm. my dog ate my shoe. That's a okay. real thing. Good girl kisses. You can have whatever you want because you don't chew shoes. <laughs> Good girl, bless you.